So, do, 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 do. and welcome Terry and David yeah, as hey well. Guys. Thanks for joining tonight. Everybody comes in muted, by the way. So you can unmute yourself. Um, thumbs up from Terry. Nice. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Sorry. Just, uh, just wanted to check in. No, no, worries. no worries. Awesome. Glad to have you. Yeah. Cool. All right. And, and, and Mr. Heist is here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Is the, is the fan with you, David, or is it, are you flying solo tonight? Here. Cool. Oh, cool. Cool. Hey. Excellent. Nice. Hey, everybody. At least, at least three. Excellent. All right. Cool. cool. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, as I, um, I, I've already said, but I'll, uh, I, I'll let you guys know again, just so uh, everybody knows, we are um, streaming this onto our uh, live, uh, our Facebook Live uh, page as well. Um, you know, just for information purposes. Uh, if you're signed in on the Zoom meeting, you get to interact with us and talk and everything and ask questions. So uh, when we post those as events, you know, be sure to, uh, um, you know, sign in with, with these and that way it's a little bit easier to interact. But we wanted to share this with everybody as well. So tonight we're going to be doing uh, a, an overview of the My SSI app and walking you through it all. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty powerful app as far as being able to keep up with all things SSI that relate actually specifically to you. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So the app is designed to make it easier for you to keep track of your dives, your buddies, uh, what classes are coming up, your materials, your certifications, as well as uh, uh, some tools that you can use uh, that, are, that are built right into the, uh, into the app as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, what I've, what I've got is I've got the app on my phone uh, and I can share my uh, phone's screen uh, to uh, the meeting. So uh, hopefully everybody can now see my, what, what looks like a, a version of my phone, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Yep. All right. So the app that we're specifically talking about is this guy right here, the My SSI app. Uh, in the store, there may be two versions. When they uh, switched from their old version to their new version, they, uh, they didn't just upgrade the app. They created a new one, and I think the old one is still lingering out there. It's got a gray background instead of the black background that we have here. Uh, but this is the one that we're talking about. So we'll go ahead and uh, enter it. And when you first come into the uh, My SSI app, it gives you a little screenshot right, of what's going on. Now, um, I'll be honest with you. I, um, I, up here, you'll see that mine is, is kind of blank. It has my total dives, which uh, is tracked through the Dive SSI system. Uh, and when you have uh, uh, dives logged through the dive log portion of the My SSI app, it will also show you your, uh, your, your deepest dive and your longest dive as, uh, as records up here. Um, I've been logging my dives electronically through a different app called DiveLog that I've been using for, for way more years than uh, the MySSI app has been available. And so I continue to log my dives there because I am a bit of a, uh, a data junkie. Um, and so I, I like to keep it all in there and I don't you know, go through the whole uh, duplication. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you don't have a, a, an electronic dive log that you're using, um, we're gonna walk through in my app how you create a, a, a log dive, uh, associate, to a, associate to a site, add buddies, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so that's what would normally be up here as well. Um, you always get a map right off the bat um, based upon your location. So there's us, and hey, look, we're at Channel Island Scuba. Um, if you, you know, click on the, on the map, it'll, you know, take you to, uh, uh, a, a view of the map, but we'll get to that later. Um, and there's also things like, uh, new videos, uh, there, there's videos in the MySSI app that are shared and you can watch, um, and promotion. So if everybody, if you haven't heard, right, um, SSI is giving away the, uh, science of diving digital materials. Uh, it is not the certification. The final is built into the materials now. Um, when you complete them, uh, you get a certificate 
the certification does require you to still attend the class. But uh, if you do that, we, we, of course, take the cost of the materials off of the normal tuition and all that. Okay, so that's the latest announcement from them. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll jump into uh, what we have here under the menu bar. So menu, people who aren't used to using apps will sometimes call this the hamburger. Um, if, you, if you talk with people, so if anybody says, oh, press your hamburger, they're talking about their, the menu button. But if you use enough apps, you know that this is the symbol for the menu, okay? And so when we click on that, we get uh, a, a, a main menu. We've got home, programs and cards, the dive log, SSI partners and places, events and more, and then an SSI tab. And then down here, there's uh, uh, some other buttons, if you will, that you can press. So let's start off and we'll get through these guys first because that's the those are the fastest. Um, mine that says nine will be a different number on your uh, on your uh, app. OK, so when I press that, this is your achievement screen. So in SSI, uh, every diver has a different level, right? So uh, we, we talk about levels of divers. So uh, level one is an open water diver. Level two is a specialty diver. So somebody who has completed two specialties and 12 dives. Uh, level three would be an advanced open water diver. So 24 dives plus four specialties. Level four is master diver, 50 dives, four specialties plus stress and rescue, okay? And then it doesn't stop there, right? So each one of these levels, as you accumulate more dives, you achieve new levels, right? So uh, level five would be a century diver, so 100 dives. Uh, level six, bronze with 200. Seven is 300 dives. Eight is 500 dives. Level nine is 1,000 dives. And then level 10, I'm you know crossing my fingers that I'll get there, but that's 5,000 dives, all right? I have a ways to go. <laughs> no fair, Terry's enjoying a margarita, it looks like, so. <laughs> I'm come, what can I say? I'm coming off a happy hour Zoom, so, you know. Outstanding. Ah, you <laughs> Very nice. Um, so as we scroll down through here as well, we have other records. So again, total dives, deepest dive, longest dive would be displayed here. And then other awards that you would get. So specialty diver, advanced open water diver, master diver, dive master. And then once you're into the pro ranks, the numbers of certifications that you've issued. Uh, as a dive professional with SSI, okay? Questions on the achievement screen? And these get automatically updated from the server as you, uh, from, your, from your certification profiles, okay? Um, the, uh, the, the shield here is just information on DiveAssure. Um, uh, DiveAssure is a is a is is dive insurance uh, similar to Dan's uh, dive insurance, um, but dive assure is 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 more prevalent in Europe. They uh, where SSI is headquartered, so they have a little button here. Um, last time I checked, it's still not available in the U.S., but it's still part of the app. You know where it is now if you're interested. Um, but I I personally carry Dan insurance. Um, the uh. uh uh, you can't see this because my phone is laying on the, the table, right? But when you click on the QR code button, I'm sorry, let's go back here. So the little QR code, when you click on that, all that's going to do is turn your camera on. And it enables you to scan QR codes and then the app will process those based upon what the, uh, uh, what the, what the, what the QR code signifies. So that could be uh, a, a buddies information. We'll show you how to add buddies in a minute. Um, and it could also be how to uh, uh, verify your dives. So uh, with SSI, when you log your dives, um, they need to be verified to update your count. And all you have to do, if you come into uh, uh, the, the shop, we have a, a QR code for the shop where you can scan that. It verifies your dives and then those get automatically updated to your dive count. Um, also, at some SSI dive sites, sponsored dive sites, uh, the, the site itself will have its own QR code that you can scan to verify the dive. So um, these are normally at dive, uh, SSI dive resorts. Um, I just went to Florida uh, at the beginning of March uh, diving at the Blue Grotto, 
and they're, uh, uh, they have their own uh, QR code for the dive site to, to immediately verify it there, okay? So let's get into the rest of these menus. Um, let's talk about programs and cards. So if you click on the programs and cards uh, menu item, it brings up these three tabs, programs, cards, and tables. Uh, let's flip over. I'm going to go over to the uh, tables tab right now. Okay, uh, and these are all the tables that you might need to might need if you are diving the tables, for instance. So uh, we have the SSI air and nitrox tables are automatically built into the app. Um, if you are a nitrox diver, the central nervous system clock table and the equivalent air depths table is also part of the app. So if we just click on those, I'm going to do the SSI uh, air and nitrox tables. You have the tables right there, right? So you don't have to buy copies or keep track of them. Nobody loses their phone, right? Mm -hmm. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> so you've always got that available um, and you can always access it. Now, I know most people are diving the diving computers now, um, but having access to the tables is still useful um, because the algorithm that most computers run off of is the algorithm that was used to generate the tables just at constant depth. So if you're ever wondering, hey, I'm planning on going and doing, you know, my first dive of the day and it's going to be to 60 feet, how much time am I going to have? You can just pull up the tables and say, oh, that's about a 50 minute dive, right? Air, 60, 50 minutes. And that gives you an idea, right? Now, of course, after you have uh, a dive and, and some residual nitrogen on you, um, that's you're going to have to follow your computer, but you know, first dive of the day, it can be useful. And that's what we see with the other, with the other tables as well. So the central nervous system uh, table, again, for nitrox diving, keeping track of our uh, O2 on gassing, uh, right. if you will. We have the equivalent air depths table. So if you are diving a mix other than 32 or 36, which is already built into the uh, air and nitrox tables that we just looked at. Here's the table to get your equivalent air depths. Um, that's all from nitrox, of course. Um, if you haven't taken that, we, we discuss that there. But again, the easiest way to dive, dive computer, you don't have to worry about the tables, okay? Um, the pathway posters that they show here are uh, basically smaller versions of the, uh, of the uh, posters that we have in the shop, but it gives you an idea of what you do and how you progress through the SSI system. So if we look at, uh, let's take a look at the scuba pathway here, right? It talks about starting, right? You start as a open water diver, you know, level one, four dives, and then again, how to achieve these other levels. So level two is 12 dives plus two, the star indicates specialty courses, right? Advanced open water, level three, 24 plus four, 50, uh, dives plus five for master diver and so on, right? And then how you transition into becoming a, a dive professional if you're so interested, okay? Um, the other thing that's useful as uh, a, a, a open water diver or scuba diver is this training pathway, scuba and extended range. So this poster gives you, based upon your level, right, um, what specialty programs you can move into, uh, what prerequisites are for extended range, whether it's open circuit, rebreather programs, etc., and then how you move from starting to continuing your education into becoming a dive professional and how all of those courses interlink. Um, so you have a clear path to be able to figure out, you know, always what's next, okay? So that's a quick overview of the tables tab. Any questions on that? No? All right, let's flip over to the cards tab. So when I click on cards, this is going to show me all of the certifications that I have from SSI. Um, also, if you have come from another dive agency and you have certifications from another dive agency, you can bring those cards in uh, to us and we can add them to your profile. Now it doesn't have a pretty picture, but uh, I did my free diving instruction with uh, 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 FII 
uh, before SSI had a free diving program. And so I was able to at least take my FII certification and put that into my SSI profile. So now SSI knows I'm a level one free diver and I can automatically, if I wanted to move into a, a, a level two free diving course. But all your certification cards are in here. You get them automatically from SSI whenever you uh, complete a certification. We also give you a physical card, which you guys know if you've taken uh, from taking courses with us. Um, we get you a physical card as well. But the nice thing with SSI is you automatically always get the digital card and the cards are downloaded to your phone. So you don't have to have cell service if you synchronized your phone before you left on a trip, right? Um, synchronize your phone. Uh, or the app, I should say, uh, and then the cards are there. And when you get there, if you don't have uh, uh, you cell service, you still have access to your cards. And to access the cards, it's just as simple as, um, you know, well, let's, let's, let's pick one that I like. Uh, let's look at, my, at that guy, right? So if you click on the card, it's going to take you to the card image, your certification ID, and then if you tap on the card image itself, it'll flip it over to the back to give you more information. It's summarized down here, but uh, you know, some people, uh, particularly when you're traveling and, and you're, you're, they're, they're checking off your certifications, they want to see the back of the card as well, um, which is summarized here. Uh, this QR code can be scanned to take you to the uh, verification. Um, in this case, since this is an instructor card, it's going to check my teaching status, okay? But on other cards that are recreational, it'll allow an SSI dive center to quickly access uh, your profile to do verification of your certifications uh, in mass if, that, if, you, if you need them to do that, okay? Cool, questions on cards? No? All right. And then finally, programs. So programs is all of your digital materials. Uh, again, the nice thing with SSI, all the courses are, uh, all the course materials are provided to you digitally. Uh, you get to keep them forever. And as they update the course materials, the course materials update on your app as well. So you always have the latest version of the materials, uh, which is nice. You know, it's the, probably the biggest advantage um, of, of over physical books. I'm there with you. I like to have physical books. Um, you know, you can touch them, you can uh, highlight them, you can, you know, what, it's easier to flip back and forth. When you get used to um, maneuvering through the digital materials, it's pretty easy here, and we'll talk about going into them, bookmarking, etc. cetera. Um, but the, the, the hands down, the, the biggest advantage of having uh, access to the digital materials is that you've always got the most recent version of them. So I'm going to scroll down here to uh, one that I've already downloaded. I, I know for sure. So here's the here's the way to tell if there is this icon over your over the image of the course. That means that the course has not been downloaded to your uh, to your device yet. Uh, and so the first time that you click on it, it's going to first start off by trying to download the materials. Uh, from the SSI servers. Um, so I'm just going to go into one that's already downloaded my extended range um, SCR program. When you bring it up, it's going to ask you to choose a language. It always does this. And then it's going to give you video options. So all the digital materials have videos embedded in them as well. Uh, and so you can choose to how much space you want to let that, that program occupy on your device by selecting the level of videos that you want. No video if it's mobile, so more compressed, or if you want full HD. Um, I'm gonna leave mine at no. Uh, and then I, you click continue program, and it enters into the course materials, okay? Um, once you're in the course materials, you can uh, swipe left or right to advanced pages, or you can use the buttons here at the bottom to move forward or back a page, okay? And then this guy here is your table of contents. So if I click on my table of contents, it brings up, well, what you would expect, the table of contents, right? So uh, you have 
buttons up here, right, where you can look at the index. You can quickly go to what you have not seen. I was a good student. I read all my materials and took all my quizzes, so everything is seen right here. If you add bookmarks to pages, those would be shown here. And then you can also take notes as you're going through the materials, and those will show up under your notes tab. Okay, so I'm going to go back to index. Uh, it's really easy to navigate through, so you can uh, quickly from the table of contents, if you're like, hey, um, I wanted to look at something about the, uh, uh, the Horizon SCR, particularly about the scrubber system, right? I can uh, go through that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I wanted to remember um, cycling the scrubber canisters. I can click on that, and it'll advance me right to uh, uh, that page in the materials so that I can quickly use this as reference materials as well. Uh, you know, if I'm out in the field or, you know, just wanted to double check something that I hadn't previously. Okay. Um, right here, the three dots, if we click on that, um, it enables us to change font sizes. Uh, night mode is going to make it less bright, right? Day mode, brighter. And then you can also add a note or provide feedback. So the feedback option, there is a, uh, a, a way through that to let SSI know or direct questions about things that you've read in the materials or things that you think might need a correction or something like that. Okay, So that's what that enables you to do. And then right here, right, what looks like a shaded out bookmark is where you would tap to add a bookmark to your bookmarks information. So now, if I go back to my table of contents and I go to my bookmarks tab, I can now see, oh yeah, I bookmarked cycling scrubber canisters. And that way I can quickly go there in the future um, as a point of reference, okay? So if there's critical information from your materials that you wanna be able to access again later on, bookmark it and you'll be able to quickly just jump right to that rather than going through the table of contents in their entirety. Cool? Um, one thing, uh, I, I'm gonna hit cancel there. When you exit, when you wanna exit the materials entirely and go back to the app, that's what this back arrow is for. You'll get this prompt that says close program. Are you, want, are you sure you want to close this program? It's not talking about closing the app. It's talked by program. It means the course materials. Okay. So if you hit OK, it's just going to close that program, right, and take you back to all of your programs. Okay. Um, when you are taking new courses uh, with SSI and you are reading your materials prior to academic sessions or, or meeting with your instructor, um, you can read the materials on the app. Um, I normally suggest uh, for students to, instead of doing it on the app, to use the DiveSSI.com site, whether logged in on a computer or on your phone or a tablet using a browser. Um, the reason for that is that the tracking of your progress on the app is handled by an intermediary server. Uh, so if you are doing the, the, the training or doing your reading on the app, uh, it loads that to the uh, education management server every time you shut or shut down or start the app when it does its synchronization. The SSI server, which your instructor can see your progress on, only synchronizes to the education management server when you go into divessi.com, go into your materials and click a, click a page or two. And that forces a refresh from that server to the education management server to repopulate your progress, okay, and sync those two up. So when you're getting ready for a class, it's usually easier uh, and more efficient for you to just go straight to divessi.com and then use the app later on when you want to study, when you want to redo your knowledge reviews or what have you in preparation for finals, et cetera, or just, you know, to, to recheck stuff. Okay? Cool.
All right, so we're going to go back out to the top level menu. Um, that was programs and cards. We're going to do dive log last. Okay, so SSI partners and places. If we click on that, uh, it's going to bring up that map that we saw earlier when we clicked on the map from the home screen. Okay, you have two options with SSI partners and places. You have the map view and you have the list view. The map, pretty self-explanatory, right? It's a map. Shows where you are. Uh, a red marker is an SSI dive center. A black marker is a dive site that has been created by uh, an SSI diver or an SSI dive center in the course of logging their dives. Okay, um, So you can always jump to those and get additional information. If you click on the list tab, right, it's going to give you all this information, but in list, uh, sorted by uh, uh, distance from you. Okay, so uh, I'm 53 meters away from Channel Island Scuba. I guess that's the level of accuracy of my GPS on my phone, because I'm sitting in Channel Island Scuba right now. <laughs> um, and then we've got distances. Uh, unfortunately, it is all in kilometers. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to get it to switch over to miles. Um, maybe they don't want you to that. I don't know. But if you multiply this by about 0.6, you have miles. Okay, uh, or cut it in half. That's close enough. Um, but you can also filter this by centers or sites alone. So if you just want to see what dive centers are nearby, you click the center. Uh, it gives you a list of all the SSI dive centers sorted by distance. If you just want to see dive sites, click on sites. Okay. There is a search bar down here. So if I'm on the map, or I'm sorry, I'm going to stay here. If I go to search and type in Deer Creek, for instance, it's going to start filtering automatically and just give me all the dive sites that have deer in the title, right? Or um, like I said, I went to the Blue Grotto. Um, it's not on my list. Okay. So sometimes the site that you've been to hasn't been added. If it hasn't been added, you can add the site yourself. Okay. Uh, Leo Carrillo, State Beach, popular spot. Okay. So most of the ones in our area, uh, common uh, uh, beach diving sites have been added already and uh, many of the uh, dive sites over at the islands as well. Again, keep in mind that some people have different names for the same site, so it may be added in there twice. Uh, that's where uh, going to the map view is sometimes uh, uh, a little easier, if you will. Okay. Let me clear that out. Back to map. Okay. Because, um, yeah, people call them different things. So on the map view, you can always, uh, you know, zoom in directly onto uh, an area and say, yeah, that's where I am. So I'm going to click on that. And that site is called Oasis, right? If I click on that, uh, you have options to, uh, you know, give an overview. Uh, again, this is data that's been added by other divers. So, um, you know, statistics. How many people have logged dives there um, with average time, average depths? Um, if people add wildlife sightings to the site, that'll be viewable there as well. So it gives you an idea of uh, what's at each of the sites as you're planning out um, where you want to go and what you want to do. Cool. All right, we'll go back to the menu again. Um, Events and more. We'll click on that now. Um, under events and more, uh, every SSI diver is associated with at least one SSI dive center. When you signed up and took your first course from Channel Island Scuba, you automatically got associated the Channel Island Scuba. We are your dive center as far as the app is concerned. If you take courses from other SSI dive centers, you'll get associated with them as well. But what the events tab is, is a quick way to see all the events that your dive center has planned in the future in terms of courses, 
We can add dives here, um, et cetera, uh, and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, as you scroll through there and you're wondering, you know, what's next on the agenda for training or what have you, you can uh, click on those and get details, right? So, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me let me pick one. So I'm associated with a couple of dive centers because of training and and all that. So I'm going to scroll down to, uh, let's see, one of ours. Is that it? No. Nope. So when you click on the item, there we go. When you click on the item. Uh, here's perfect buoyancy course that we've added um, for August 4th, 2020. Starts at 6 p.m., right? We can type in, you get details that we've added, right? Uh, what, what, what's going on? There's gonna be a classroom session and two pool sessions on um, information about us, as well as other offerings of that perfect buoyancy course. So anytime you click on a perfect buoyancy course for a dive center or any type of course, you're gonna get not only the one that you clicked on, but you'll get a summary of all the other offerings that that dive center has. Um, and with that, you can, uh, so open, uh, I'm not gonna click on open because on my open, the way I have my events set up, if you click on open, it's gonna take you to our online booking system so that you can uh, sign up for that event. That's gonna take us out of the app and load up my browser and everything's gonna go weird. So. Um, we won't click on that. Share enables you to share that to with friends and then add to calendar. If you signed up for the course or want to have a reminder about it, click on that and it will add it to your calendar. Cool. Again, little arrow is going to take us back. Okay. And then the other tabs up here, we've got news and videos. So under news is going to be all the news that SSI has been putting out through their blog. Um, so there is a, a website, blog.divessi.com, if you want to go and read these directly or keep up with them. But as SSI makes posts to that, uh, it gets tied into the app, and you can always flip over to the news to find out uh, the latest happenings directly from SSI. Um, if you didn't get our announcement on this, SSI already has it. Uh, if you take a, if you purchase a continuing education course before the end of May, mm -hmm. um, and submit that receipt to the aggressor fleet, you get a $300 certificate from them for uh, a, a trip that you can book all the way up to the end of uh, end of 2021. So um, they, they've always been, they've got, there's always aggressor and SSI has always had a good partnership. The uh, they're the ones that they get to do the giveaway for the master diver challenge um, to uh, go on one of their boats for a week. So that's the news from SSI. And on the videos tab, uh, it's basically all the videos that SSI has posted as well, right? Um, so information on blue oceans, uh, how to log, you know, uh, leave feedback on a course, um, what some what, what certain skills look like, etc. Um, kind of a you know cool little way to check out um, you know some interesting stuff on these ocean first videos. So they're a dive center uh, out in Boulder, Colorado. They've put together uh, several uh, uh, 360 videos of okay. dives that they've done on some of their trips. That's what this little indicator is. If you have one of those devices where you like virtual reality devices where you can uh, wear your phone on your face, basically as you turn your head, um, you're looking through the underwater world, through the video as it's running. So um, kind of cool. So if you haven't checked those out, um, I think you can just, you could just probably hold your phone up in front of your face, but you got to turn around uh, to, to get the whole experience. All right, so that's the videos tab. Let's go back to our menu. Okay. Um, on the SSI menu item, that's going to give you just information about the app. You can, under the feedback tab, give feedback directly to SSI um, on something that you ran into in the app, something that you'd like to see improved, what have you. Um, so a quick way to do that. Uh, and then they've got their privacy statement on here as well, which 
everybody's got one now, right? So that's that. Okay. Cool. All right. Before we get into dive log, we're going to do the one button down here that we didn't do previously. Okay. So this is probably this one and the dive log. If you're using the dive log app are the ones that you're going to use most often. So this app, this, this, uh, little icon here, the person with the gear, click on that. That's you. That's where you get to do all of your settings and change, uh, information. Um, this pencil icon here, if you click on that, that's going to enable you to change your profile image and it does sync back to the dive SSI, uh, website. So, um, this image is the one that's associated with your profile and gets printed on your uh, certification card. So anytime you want to update that, you can. Um, and then it's just going to give you a summary of what's going on with you, right? Your master ID, how long you've been diving, what your training center number is, if you're a dive professional, what your what that number is. Uh, personal data just has, um, you know, yes. basically your your address that's associated with the uh, with your profile on SSI. Um, show all achievements is going to show you the achievements that we clicked on by clicking on the achievements button. Okay, so it's just another way to get there. And then show QR code. This is how to show when you click on show QR code. This displays your personal QR code. Okay. And this is how, when we're adding buddies, we're going to add buddies to, uh, to, to each other's profiles, right? Um, you would go into, like Laz, who's sitting next to me, could go into his dive log, which we'll get to again in just a second. And there's a buddy section there. He can click on, I want to add a buddy. It's going to turn on his camera. His camera looks at this code. And then he gets, I get added to his list of dive buddies automatically. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You can edit information in here as well. You can log out if you want to for uh, uh, privacy purposes. If you don't click log out, you just stay logged in all the time. Uh, and then under settings, um, this is this is uh, useful information as well. So again, what user is logged in? So that should be your email address. Uh, how much space the program is using on your phone. So I've got 262 megabytes on here in between the app and downloaded uh, programs, etc. cetera. Uh, English, right, is my uh, language that I have set, units to Imperial, even though it always gives me metric <laughs> uh, on the app, right? Um, and then system information is useful uh, for debugging purposes, if you have, um, uh, uh, you know, issues going on with, uh, uh, with the app, it also tells you more information about how your connectivity, uh, and again, available space on your phone for additional programs. Okay. But most importantly, we have the synchronization tab under synchronization. Okay. This is all the stuff that gets synchronized back and forth between the dive SSI uh, server and your app. Okay. So when you click on here, if you're like wondering, Hey, how come, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my latest C card isn't on here. You can go to the synchronization tab, find C cards and see the last time it was updated. Oh, it was last updated at uh, 603 today. I want to check it right now because it's, it only synchronizes when you, enter the program and when you exit it. Okay. So if I want to synchronize it right now, because I've been in it, I just click the kind of re refresh button here. It'll retrieve data. Tell me it's retrieving data, right? Got the little spinning icon going and then it'll update. It's completed. It was last updated now at 639 today. Okay. If you ever want to just dump the data and start over, that's what the trash can is for. So hitting the trash can will remove all of your C cards, for instance, and then you would hit the refresh and bring them all back in. Okay. Um, just for, you know, some refresh purposes. Uh, uh, I've never really used the trash can before. Uh, uh, but if things are getting weird for some reason, or your, your cards are out of order and you want to get a, get them all uh, a fresh start. 
you can dump them and restore them from here. Okay? Cool. All right. The moment we've all been waiting for, the dive log section. So let's jump in there. So, uh, dive log, right? And buddies. Bye. Let's go over to the buddies tab to start off with. Okay. And when you go into your buddies list, it'll show who you've added as buddies. Once somebody is your buddy on this list, you can immediately associate them with the dives that you do, right? If you did a, like if I went and did a dive with Quinn, I could immediately add Quinn to my dive log and we would be able to share dive information back and forth. Okay. Um, to add a buddy, we will click on that QR code, which again turns on your camera. Okay. So just to prove that it works, everybody who has their app, go ahead to the buddy section and you can add me as a dive buddy. And if you're going to do that, let me know that you're done. And you should see me on your list of buddies at that point. Yeah. Are we good? All right. So flipping back over to dive log. Sometimes takes a little bit to refresh as well. So you may scan it and then you have to exit and come back in and it'll refresh and, and you'll see me. Okay. But going over to dive log, right? To add a dive, we've got our little plus button. Okay. If you click on plus, it's going to say, do you want to add your dive manually? Do you want to scan a dive QR code or do you want to import from a dive computer? Okay. Import from dive computer only works with Mares dive computers uh, because the with the with the Bluetooth interface. So SSI and Mares are owned by the same parent company. Uh, while many dive computers now have Bluetooth built into them, um, they all have kind of their own, you know, keys and codes and everything that goes back and forth. And of course, you know, um, Sunto and uh, Atomic and Scuba Pro are probably not going to want to share uh, their, you know, Bluetooth information with a competitor so that the SSI app will be able to talk to it, right? So uh, that's the limitation there. Uh, just so you know, I'll answer that question right up front. On the scan dive QR code, so let's say Laz and I go do a dive and um, I enter all the dive information into my dive log. Laz could then go and click on the plus button and scan my dive QR code. And from my dive, I can turn on or I can show him my QR code for the dive and it will transfer that information from my dive into a new dive for him so that he doesn't have to repeat all the same information makes it just go a little bit faster um, when you're when you're diving together okay but the way that you'll most likely add these is going to be through manual input so we'll click on that okay and then you start getting into questions about your dive so uh, it's going to first ask you your your dive type well most of us are doing scuba right so we'll click on scuba uh, It'll automatically increment numbers. Again, since I don't, I, since I use a separate app, uh, mine is starting off with number one. It's going to automatically populate the date and time, right? You can change those. So if you're doing your, uh, uh, if you're doing your dive logging at the end of the day or the next day, right? You can always change it and say, no, I did this uh, April 30th um, at, uh, let's say uh, 10 in the morning okay, and apply, right? And now it updates my date and time. On the score, if you wanna give stars to your dives, 
Um, you certainly can, one to five. Uh, that's something that I used to do, and it's it's kind of a relative term. So what may be, uh, uh, you know, for California, you go to a site and it's like, wow, this is a five star site. Um, and then you go to Palau and you're like, hmm, five stars isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I, I kind of stopped doing that. But uh, again, it's, it's up to you. Um, and then we go on and we move into uh, other sections. Right. So every dive is going to need a site. Um, and it's going to uh, immediately populate with sites nearby. So if you're doing your dive logging out in the field, it's going to be a little bit easier. The downside of doing it in the field is that if your dive sites weren't synchronized from the server before you went out on your dive, it, they may not show up here. Okay. Um, so always, you know, kind of keep your, uh, your app up to date in that regard. So, um, if you don't have, uh, if you, if you're at a site that has a QR code, you can scan that right off the bat. Um, you can go to the map, um, and other sites, um, if you want to, uh, use something besides what's on nearby, um, or you can create your own private site. Okay. And to do that, right, it's going to use your GPS. So you want to be at the site when you do this, don't come back home and, create private site and now you've GPS your backyard okay as the dive site it's very embarrassing people show up at your house with scuba gear and they're like what's going on <laughs> okay um, so do that at the site okay so for our purposes I'm just gonna choose Leo Carrillo and it populates into the site okay for wildlife you can uh, you know, there are suggestions already built in that other people have added. So if you want to add what you saw, you can definitely do so. And it's broken down into, uh, so we started off with suggestions, right? Because these are, well, these are species that we see here. I wouldn't say they're necessarily common. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a great white shark um, on a dive <laughs> yet. Um, you know, so, uh, species that are common to or local to the area, but it also has others that are uh, broken down into categories, right? So if you want to get more specific, okay? So let's say we, uh, we saw, of course, a Garibaldi. And we'll click on that, and we'll add that one animal to our wildlife section, okay? For buddies, I can automatically Again, if I've added my buddy, when I click on buddies, it's going to go to my buddies list, and I can say, yeah, I did that dive with, uh, with Quinn, right? You'll notice that if you didn't add your buddy previously, don't worry. You're not going to have to go all the way back out. The QR code scanner is down here again for you, so you can quickly, oh, I forgot to add my buddy. Boom, just do it right here and uh, add them in. And, of course, they'll, they'll appreciate that. Um, and they'll be very happy to scan your dive QR code after you've entered all this information in for them. They'll be very appreciative. Okay. Um, we then can get into details of the dive, uh, duration, let's say it was 45 minutes, um, depth in feet, uh, Leo Carrillo, maybe 30 feet. Um, and then under scuba, it, there, this is a submenu. So you can call, you can say whether it was a specialty dive. By specialty dive, it means, you know, may, were you taking a course? Um, is there something specific that you want to mention about it, right? Oh, we went, uh, we didn't go diving at night. It was 10 in the morning. What am I thinking? Mm -hmm. um, we were navigating, all right? So I can add that to my, uh, to my dive information. Um, if you were diving nitrox, you can turn that on. You can track cylinder information. Cylinder information is important to track not only from figuring out air consumption later on, but also figuring out weighting, right? So if I was diving a steel tank, right, um, and then later on I get down to weights and I say, and I was diving 18 pounds, well that's going to be good information later on when uh, maybe I'm, you know, switching to an aluminum cylinder, I can go back to my last dive that I did on steel and say, oh yeah, that's right, I used 18 on steel, so I'm gonna use 22 on aluminum now, right? Um, we can also add other information, uh, cylinder volume, 
start and end pressure, average depth, uh, and surface air consumption rates. Um, if you're diving a computer, the computer is going to have that information and you can populate that in. It's sometimes useful to track, uh, particularly if you uh, calculate out your surface air consumption rate. That's very useful uh, uh, as you progress through your diving career to you know, see how comfortable you, you, you're getting, right? We should see that number coming down um, from where we started as new divers. Uh, and it's an indication as to how good our buoyancy control is, uh, how hard we work in general, that type of thing. So um, a good indicator of our comfort in the water, okay? We can also add additional dive information. So dive type, I'll go into, this was a fun dive. Okay, as opposed to education. If you're doing training dives and you're logging your app, it's usually a good idea to tag them as education and have your instructor verify the dive rather than using the dive shop uh, verification code to verify your dive. Uh, your, if you verify your dive with your instructor's mm -hmm. QR code, it's like your instructor is electronically signing your dive log. You still get credit for the dive, it still goes to your totals, it's just a more accurate representation of who your instructor was and that they're signing off on your proficiency, okay? Um, body of water, so, you know, um, yeah, we were in the ocean, okay? Um, water type you can add, again, for weighting purposes, salt water is denser, so we need more weight. Uh, and then entries, Leo Carrillo is a shore dive. Um, if there was current, right, we could put how strong that current was. We'll say no current. Uh, surface conditions, right, they were, ah, they were moving. That's all relative, right? <laughs> Weather, if you want to track that as well. So, uh, cloudless day or sunny. And then other things like air temp, uh, if you have that. I usually don't really care about air temp so much because I'm in the water and the water temp I'm gonna get from my computer. Um, so air temp I usually don't worry about, but if you're interested in tracking that, you certainly can. We'll say 74 on um, what the visibility was. It was an amazing day at Leo Carrillo. We had 40 feet, trust me. <laughs> And then water temp, we'll say, uh, yeah, 56. Okay. You can also, in here, um, add, so as you, as you maybe saw, uh, go away. We'll go to gear details. So we have gear details and we have notes. One of the things that you may want to track on your dives, right, is what gear did you take? Um, you know, I, particularly in terms of water temperature, what, um, what exposure system were you wearing? Were you wearing a seven mil? Were you wearing a five mil? Were you wearing a seven plus a hooded vest or something like that, right? And then in the notes, you could track, hey, I felt cold on that dive. Well, okay, I felt cold in 56 degree water with a seven mil, so next time I go in 56 degree water, I'm gonna wear a seven mil plus fill in the blank, right? Mm -hmm. A thicker hood, a hooded vest, um, what have you, right? Um, so it's a good way to look back on conditions and uh, be able to plan future dives so that you're more comfortable. Um, this You can also track, you know, what regulators you were using, dive computers, that type of stuff. Um, and then notes, you know, um, I look back on my diving career and I really wish I was more of a journalist or a journal writer because, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of dives and there's things like, uh, man, I, I, I look back and it's like, ah, I wish I would have remembered exactly on what dive I saw that manta ray for the first time or, you know, that and, and all that. Um, so that's what this is for, right? An ability to go back, um, save information and, uh, uh, and memories from the dive. So if that's your forte, I highly encourage it. Um, once we've got all that, we can click on the save button. And boom my dive is now added to my dive log, okay? Shows the location here, uh, it shows information about it. So again, 45 minutes, 30 feet on scuba, 
on the 30th of April at Leo Carrillo Beach. This button here enables me to change that view. So if I want it in grid like it is right now, or if I want it just in a list view. Okay. I'll go back to grid. Once I have that dive, I want to go, I can go back into the dive. And you'll see I've got information on it again, right? Oh, I didn't click my dive buddy. Dang it. Um, I can show my QR code. So this code could be scanned my, by, by my buddy to add the pertinent information that's shareable, right? It wouldn't share things like what my dive equipment was or um, you know how, many weight, how much weight I had, for instance, but it's gonna share pertinent information like the dive site, the time, uh, you know, that type of thing so that I don't have to replicate that all myself and go through the list and, and find the dive sites and everything, okay? Um, but to get this added to your dive, dive count in the SSI system, we want to go to award verification. And when you click on award verification, it's going to turn your camera on again. And like I said, every shop uh, is going to have a QR code that you can utilize, right? And I happen to grab mine here, so I'm gonna scan the shop's QR code. Maybe. Did I just lock it up? Uh-oh. Oh. Hold on, award verification. Uh, I. I think because of the glare, yeah, it's, it's the... flipping it out a little. One more time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Instant. <laughs> so now, once you verified it, right, it will show that your dive has been verified, record verified by Dive Center, Channel Island Scuba in Thousand Oaks. Shows our logo. Shows our. Um, uh, dive center number for easy reference as well. Um, and now once it's verified, you, it will go and will update your uh, profile on divessi.com and increase your dive number, okay? Real quick, once your dive is verified, you cannot change any information in it. You can no longer edit it. If you want to edit it, you're like, oh man, wait a second. It wasn't a 30 foot dive, it was a 900 foot dive, right? Mm. <laughs> that you have to unverify because my dive shop is not gonna sign off on you going to 900 feet, right? Makes sense. So uh, <laughs> there are certain things that once, once it's verified, you can't change them because of that, uh, mm. because it's essentially us approving of that dive, if you will. So you could go into unverify, um, it'll reset, any awards or that type of thing um, and now you can go back in and edit it the edit option is back okay so if we go back again and I go to the home screen once it synchronizes back up again I will get that information here as well. Actually, it probably needs to be a verified dive for it to uh, yeah. uh, um, to show up. So let me go in and I'll go ahead and verify one more time. Okay, got it. See, verified, edit icon gone. Okay, we'll go back. And I can go home, still not there. Let's go to my little guy. We'll go to settings, we'll go to synchronization and see dives were last synchronized at 603. So let's force synchronization. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. It takes a little while. Trust me, it'll show up. <laughs> All right. Cool. And so that's the dive log uh, feature. And as you add those in, right, it's just going to keep rolling and, and accumulating. 
uh, as you go. Uh, one thing, real quick, if you already have um, dives logged outside of this application, as you saw, right, when I, when I added this dive, it had dive number one. It automatically created dive number one because it didn't see any dives in my dive log, okay? I can tell it that it was dive number 1,163. I can override that and it will then say here what that number was. And that way, if you have a bunch of, of, of log dives uh, you know, from previous to the app and you've got them someplace else and you wanna start and keep track of total dives with this app going forward, you can, on your first dive, artificially set it to what your current dive number is and it will uh, accumulate from there going forward, okay? Cool. And that is the MySSI app. Any questions? All good? Everybody disappear. Everybody turn their cameras off. Ma. <laughs> All right, Terry. Terry's Terry, nice. good. <laughs> my store? Oh. No. 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 Yeah. My it's not? No. Mm -hmm. huh. I see you guys just fine. Well, it's excellent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So um, if you have questions later on, um, you know, you can always email me. I, or stop by, well, stop by the shop once we can have people over at the <laughs> shop, um, which will hopefully be soon. Uh, and, um, you know, but yeah, if you have questions, let me know. Um, you can, the, 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 the video that we were streaming will be posted to our website. Um, so you can always, uh, again, either email me or post comments to the video uh, and we'll answer them either way, okay? Um, and so with that, I thank everybody for their time. Mm -hmm. If there's no other questions, um, uh, yeah. Uh, on the on the dive logs, mm -hmm. when it says one thousand one hundred sixty-two, are those all verified facts? If you or can you log unverified? Um. So, so here's how here's how it works. Um. So, mine are yes, those are verified dives. Okay. Um. So. At SSI dive centers have the ability to go into your profile, okay? So let's say um, you haven't been using this function, right? Um, and you have 40 dives in your dive log right now. You can come into the shop with your dive log or, you know, and show that to us and we can go into your profile and update your dive count. And then it would show that number of dives. We, we can be, uh, thus uh, manually verify them, if you will. Okay, and then they would be verified in your profile on Dive SSI, and it would show in the app your current verified number. And then as you dive and you start adding dives to the dive log and uh, verify them, you know uh, that that number will automatically accumulate. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And did, did that answer? What, you, what you're going for with the question? Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect, thanks. perfect. Yeah, yeah, so just come on in, you know, when, when again, when we can reopen and we'll, we'll, uh, we can update your number for you and then uh, going forward with this, it'll, it'll be much easier. Piece of cake. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right, yeah, thanks a lot. So, yeah, thank you, appreciate it. So, hope everybody stays safe and healthy. Hopefully this will be behind us in a couple of weeks. Uh, May 15th was the uh, latest on the stay at home orders. If you, um, so hopefully that'll go through and we'll be back open and having you guys over here soon and um, get back into the ocean. So uh, until then, uh, take care, uh, stay safe, enjoy the rest of your evening and your weekend. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks.